okay. we can do our own intro each of us. You do yours and I'll do mine. Um, here I am with Trini. Um, how many people are known by just their first name? Well, actually, when I first knew, well, when I first saw Trini, it was Trini Woodall, but now it's Trini and it's Trini London and I have arrived in paradise. Look at all this <laughs> stuff to play with. <laughs> and you already put some on my face. I put some on your face and I'm also filming live today, Joe, because it's all about how we use social media as well. So I'm on our Facebook channel of 400,000 ladies and lots of ladies tune into live. I haven't been on for ages, so I'm going to say hi. I'm going to introduce you, Joe Good who I first, I, I think we might have vaguely our paths have crossed years ago, but I went on Joe's BBC London Radio, 1.30 in the afternoon every day. This is a woman who talks about all the stuff we chat about, as well as, you know, you have people on, you play, do you play a bit of music as well? I play two tracks every half hour. Yeah. But when Trini came on, I have it semi-darkness. I'm lit from behind because I look I younger. It looks, she looks like 12. I thought, who is this young person on BBC Radio? And then Trini got out of her seat and said, now look, darling, you need, and she took out, actually, these are new ones. Yeah, I, know. I can't remember which one you used on me. But you used a, a blusher. Yeah. And for the rest of the day, I literally glowed. And then that was it. I discovered Trini London. And my friend Gabby uh, Roslin was in your taxi. Yes, I know. Gabby was in the taxi. I'm going to put a bit more on now. Because oh, actually, with my Well, what glasses, do we have? Are these the ones that are released? Or? Lily, stop now. These are the ones that are coming out next week. But I just think that when we are over a certain age, and we aren't using always the backlight from our studio to give us that kind of amazing eternal glow, we need, I love shimmer too, and you love shimmer too, so we're two shimmer queens. But it's just to do a lip that's a full lovely lip. I mean, I how love nice it. is that lip? I love it. And not so strong. You did the pookie before, but that's incredibly soft on you. And then I'm going to take what's at the end of the brush, because it was your hat, it was your mouth, so it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to go there, and I'm going to give you that little glow on your cheek. Because this, by the way, is not out till, when is it out, Lulu? 17th. 17th. I'm going to do a tiny bit. I did, just so you know, I did Maiko and Emily on Joe, and I'm going to do on me a mixture of God knows what. But it's that, like, it's as if you had a facial, yes. and you have this sort of slightly oily cheek, but everything else is slightly matte. Yes. And that's, to me, like I want to, somebody to look and say, oh, have you changed your skincare routine? And all they've done is our makeup. Glow is youth. I mean, I'll never have my youth back, but yeah. glow helps me to look. Can we look not say the word youth? Can we say there's an amazing Go woman on called Julia Hunter, and she's like, she never reveals her age. She's an American dermatologist who I love because she talks about active ingredients for skincare like nobody else I know. But she goes, and she's from Southern, the South, Trini, when you go down the path of life, that's her expression, the path of life. And I love the agelessness in that it statement. Is. The path of life, and we've been on a journey. I've been on yeah. a hell of a journey. Your journey is extraordinary. I just want to say, I have followed you when you stuck your phone on your bathroom mirror. And see, everything I'm trying to do, you were the trailblazer. You embraced social media long before anyone my age was doing it. And you just, you just barged in and you went, here I am. And you stuck, and we'd all go, hi Trini, and you'd read our names out. Then it would fall off the mirror. Yes, then you'd so stick much. it, you'd stick it on with a band-aid yeah. or something. I'd like this second. Oh. I've got, I stuck it on with sellotape. I mean, I like, uh, Lulu and I have been on so many windows and now I have this thing on the back of my phone, which is a stick on thing. Oh. But as it's the wrong case it's still for wrong. my new phone, it means it sometimes falls off. I do it in the back of cabs. My funniest thing is back of black cabs because I love a black cab. Yes. I just say, Uber in Ireland is illegal. We went on some journeys. I ordered an Uber and then I didn't take it. Suddenly, 75 euros appeared on my statement. So watch out, Uber, in Dublin. Oh, in really? Ireland. All the taxis say, watch out, Uber isn't legal here. So I oh, really? I didn't know that. But I do know that black taxis in London are my preferred. If I'm rushing and I need to do filming, I do take the tube a bit, but I'm quite claustrophobic. I quite like a London bus, but I like the 19 or 22, you know, I think they're just, they're better buses. And they are the backbone to our listeners, the black cabbies. They the love cabbies. our radio station. I mean, black cabbies are like, I think also, if they did a poll about how many black cabbies say, oh, that Trini. Because um, I, I, there's certain black cabbies I always get. So on a Saturday, I go with my partner and we go to lunch. And inevitably, the same black cabbie picks us up because he has a Saturday rotor. Yeah. And there's this very lovely, grumpy um, wears the, um, you know, the little hat, yeah. the little thing, uh, the religious top, and is 
just the funniest man, ignores me, chats to my partners like I don't exist. <laughs> then I have the kind of young stallion ones who are kind of flirting and I think, do you see, you know, what, you know. Um, and then, and they go, never mind me, darling. Never, never mind me, But darling. you trust them. Well, I trust them. I trust them. them emphatically. So can we talk about, so I followed you on Facebook Live. I, everything you did to your face, I would try and do. The roller, I got yeah. everyone in Mallorca getting these rollers. Oh, I love rollers. that, yes. And then you said to us, I have a big project. We knew this was coming. None of us had any idea. Yeah. You said, I've got a project. And you actually said, I think I'll tell you about it next Wednesday. I think you said. <laughs> yeah, I think this, I did. This, this, next yes, Wednesday. Yeah. Um, and then... Trini London was launched and it just exploded. Now, I'm not flattering you, it literally exploded. It took a while to explode though, because I think it? it's like when people look back and say Trini and Susanna as a career exploded, it took a few years. So for us, it exploded in so much that you don't know who you compare yourself to. I remember when I was selling 47,000 books a week and I said to I said to Orion, is that good? You know, and they were like, so you just don't have a comparative. So I could either compare myself to Charlotte Tilbury and think, how well am I doing? You know, she's been around seven years, I've been around a year, but let's compare to the hardest, you know. So I think that when, for me, I look at the, the, the growth of it according to how far away I am, Hi, Lily. Oh, How there's far a dog away? here. I have a, I have a dog show on my radio show called The Barking Hour. This is such a oh, bonus. Let's get Lily. Let, let's get is Lily. she a Patterdale or is she a Jack she's Russell? She's a Parsons Terrier. She's a Parsons. Yeah. Yeah. She's gorgeous, she's this little dog out here with one covered eye. I know. She'll come and say hello. Um, so I think you look at... Um, I would get people down the King's Road saying, look at my stack. And I think that's close to home, close to the mothership. Um, and then I'd start to get people at airports saying, you know, they'd pass me and they'd go, I've got my stack. You know, and I thought, oh, I mean, so excited. Anyone, anyone who has a stack, if they see me, just go, I've got my, it's the, like the most exciting thing that, or look, I'm wearing the shoe. You know, I, I love that sense that people have been inspired by something. Absolutely. With the, our cameraman, I was said to him, now, look, do you understand, Dan? The thing about this is, <laughs> and I said, do you understand, Dan? You can mix and match. This isn't just one thing for the mouth, one thing. You can use it for all different features on your face. That's what I love about it. But do you know what I also think is a massive, and it's not up to me, to analyze your success but a massive part of your success is your humor and your wit when i went into phoenix and you just started um a trini london counter yeah. it was like a west end show <laughs> so everyone had these and they still do yeah. they have their amazing outfits but they're all extroverts yeah, and there's they're, women they're, yeah. of my age older younger all queuing up to have stuff done to them just not only because of the product but i think to be in the presence of these amazing people so do you audition everyone that works for you i i do i mean what i tended to do is we started the team and then i'd go to different newcastle not so much because when we did fennec they said can we all we want to do is bond street and they said you have to do Brent cross and we want you to do our, our flagship in the north which has been a bigger challenge when you're further away so getting the right people because when you're an online brand you protect your brand and you show it how you want to show it and you use you know for us we have 92 Trini tribe models, but they're like age 16 to 83, Gail, and they are women who have a day job, all right? So I love that, and like we always knew that'd be a part of the brand. So then to transmit and translate that to somebody who represents you and say, you know, we are ageless as a brand, yeah. and we don't want people to come up to a counter and think, oh my God, what is that woman wearing behind the counter? I don't want that makeup. And we don't want somebody saying, this is what I think you should do when we have a, you know, we built this match to me tool because it was thousands and thousands of hours of work of hundreds of women we made over to work out who suits what. So it's been so torturously done. And so getting the right people is really important because you want them to be an extension. And if I go in there and I think, mm, you know, so what I always do on a Saturday, definitely with Bond Street, is I go in and I'll look at other things and just see them from afar before they know Careful. I'm there. And then I'll go up. But it's clever. It's but they're like, always laughing. They're always laughing and they wear their long sleeves. Yes. I think even Caleb, who's one of our great boys in, with red hair, he wears it. But we, like 9% of our business is in a store. We is are it? an online brand. Yeah. And, and it's getting what I think is really exciting. And this is something where you and I are finding by being in social media, a slightly older personality, how there are so many women out there online who aren't necessarily don't have as many influences as, you know, Generation Z, X, Y or Z. Um, and I think by 
giving them confidence. First, you, first of all, you've got to get a woman to trust you. So that's my channel. I want to say, I'll tell you lots of different things. And if you love and believe in them, you'll trust me. Yeah. So then they trusted. And then on Trini um, London Facebook, they started these Trini tribes, which now there's about 15,000 women around the world who are all a member of Trini tribe. They meet up in groups, like in Ireland, where I just was. We had Trini tribe evening, there are 150 women. Half of them didn't know each other. They made new friends. This movement, I love this concept of a movement. And then they give each other confidence. They go online, that match to me works, and you can buy makeup and you'll get a foundation, your yeah. white shade, and you don't have to have gone into a store. And then the community spirit, that love of a brand which you usually get in a physical environment, you can get through the Trini tribe. Because well, then we they do meetups and you know they meet somebody they've just spoken online to, they make friends with people, they present themselves as a woman they want to be seen as that day yeah you know not what your sister thinks of you or your mum puts so you down to be or your daughter nags you about just this is who i am as a woman who i want to be and like-minded people i will meet so true but also i think you earned your medals attorney because we watched you for years applying so many different products to yes. your skin so cleverly you knew what we needed and what we i mean you, you know you keep thinking are people reinventing the wheel we've had all this before yeah we actually hadn't had this before we hadn't had a stick of three brushes that will stick in a makeup bag without the end sticking out yes, because it's far too long. All these things, you know, for people in a fast life, um, you, you'd done your research simply because you'd been promoting other people's brands for so long. Yeah. You know, and, and it was testing. time you had your own. Testing, testing. testing. I mean, like, I'm, I'm sniffing around skincare at the moment, and that's the scariest thing for me, Joe, because I am as obsessed with skincare as I am with makeup as I am with clothing. Now, I couldn't go and do a clothing brand right now because I feel there's too many people with too many resources who will, you know, I can find it. I think with clothing, it's out there. You've just got to find it. I mean, sometimes it's not out there. Like I wish there were more gilets in life or whatever, but you know, generally you can sort of find it. I think with makeup, I felt I can't find this thing I want so I can make it. And for me, with skincare, my biggest challenge is I want to create something for you that you wouldn't have found. Yeah. So it's so scary yeah. to be there. She'll on do that. it though. I but know you'll do it's it. It's like, yeah, but it will be like, it's still a long time. Yeah. And, and will you have the energy? I don't know how, I mean, I, I am full on, but I'm almost sedate compared to Trini. I mean, you are, and you this are is not what, sedate. You're no, like, but I, but you are your brand. And this is the other thing. If you take your foot off the throttle, so I was speaking to one of your team when we arrived and she yeah. said that in Australia it was like being with the Beatles walking around with you. So you yeah. can walk around with Trini in London and we're all used to celebrities wandering around London. But when you were in Australia, a 70 year old man came up and went, Trini, I'm, I mean that is a big, a 70 year old Australian man is a big deal, isn't it? Yeah, that is a big um, deal. And so you are, you know, you have a global audience now, but this is you, you yeah, are this, part yeah. of this. Can you, if you take your foot off the throttle, who can you hand it over to? Or have you absolutely no intention of ever doing that? I think that when you grow a brand quickly and you get investors in to grow it quickly, you are in control, but, and it's your name on the door. So it's how quickly you can get an audience who have come to the brand because of you, but then they love everything in the brand. So if I died tomorrow, would they still buy the brand? I want to, that's an awful thing to say, but, but you know what I mean, All if I, if I for some reason was around tomorrow, I think we're already at the stage where people would because they think, oh, I'm so sad. sorry Trini's gone, but I love that makeup, it's not going to stop that's me buying an amazing it, okay? team, yeah. <laughs> and the team is fantastic and they, you know, so, so I think it's great having a person whose brand it is, because I'm not a figurehead, it's my brand, you know, that there's two different things there, mm. there are some ladies out there who... They're a, they're, they're a figurehead or they're a, you know, they're a nice launch pad for a brand. And there's other people, which are women who started a brand from, from you know, ground zero. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, funnily enough, Lila and I discussed, you know, Lila's, I like, would you take it over, you know, because there's that This thing is your of, daughter. My daughter who's 16, but she's going to go on her own path, but she's quite entrepreneurial already. She's in some ways great at some things at school, terrible at others, but generally quite entrepreneurial. So she's picked up something. Also, I love Lila because she's part of the, the storyline. She's part, I mean, she would wander into your, when she was at school, she'd just wander in to borrow a top and yeah. then go off <laughs> and you'd go and that's Lila. And we'd all go, oh gosh, what's Lila wearing today? Yeah. I mean, it's all part of, of this social media that as, as we started this off saying you embraced it. 
when many of your age group even were very um, wary of it, you would do things, and so many people have emulated you. I remember you being thrown out of Zara. Yeah, um, yeah. You would go into Zara quietly, yeah. um, and hide you, behind a back. literally hide behind a back, yeah. and you could see security following, we could see security <laughs> following you around before they marched you out. And I used to think, do you not realize who this is? I went into Zara after you'd been in Zara, because you used to say these collections come and they go really quickly. Yeah. Do they still chuck you out? Well, in the King's Road one, they're nicer. There's always, if there's a new security guard on, as soon as I start, Chloe starts filming or Lulu's filming, they'll say, excuse me, you can't film in here. And I'll just say, you know, we do, it's okay. And they, depending on how authoritative and scary I look, they then decide, shall I confront her and make her stop, turn off the camera, or shall I go and speak to management? So I just sort of say with the kind, I say, it might be a good idea if you spoke to the manager before you asked me to stop filming, kind of like that. So I'll do that now because I do film there a lot. And we have this, there's no, there's no officialness to it. And it just so happens that each store manager who's come in has probably said to the other, this mad girl Trini comes in, just let her film, it's okay. So they do let me film. I try and not put people in the shot because yeah, yeah. Um, in case they're, you know, take the time off work and they're shopping yeah. and then they're caught. Cause a lot of people say, I saw you on Trini Sara yeah. film. So there's that. Um, and then when I, I, before I was going to Australia, I said, look, I only have certain time, can we film in Bondi? And they said, no, you can't. So then I, all the Australian ladies kept what, saying- What, film in Zara in yeah, Bondi? and they said, no, you can't. So then I, all the Australian ladies um, <laughs> said, look, can you film, uh, can you do a Zara shop up? And I was like, I don't know if I'll have time. And then Friday morning, I was doing a TV show and I realized I'll have an extra 40 minutes. So I literally went onto my Instagram and I said, I will be at Zara at 12 if you come, you know, you come. So at 12 I turn up and there's all these women there in push, with push chairs because you know, they and then there's some women who run from work um, to there. So I walk in and so, um, you know, um, Nisha just starts filming and and then Dido, who's you've met, yeah, lovely um, like the store manager is saying she can't film in here and Dido's saying, yeah, I'm sure it was fine, we sorted it out. And, and then she's going to come up, just about to come up to him, and then she sees there are by the stage 40 women <gasps> following me around Zara. So it's just not, wouldn't be great if I had to say, sorry, you can't film, and all these women to go, why not? She knew it would be tricky. So I'd put her in a slightly tricky situation. But I thought, I want to look around, see what's here. Yeah. Anyway, it was what I call a tier three Zara. It wasn't very good one. They were like, uh, like Joe, we would have looked around and seen four things we loved. Right. And the rest was like, what is this shop? Right. So I think secretly that's why they didn't want me to film. Oh. Yes, I do. Because I think they always want Zara tier to be three. seen in a good light. Tier yeah, three. I think it's a tier. Like, I'd say King's Road is a tier one. Yeah. Let's talk about the industry. King's Road tier one, because it will have things in it, like it was have suddenly have a £210 cashmere cardigan yeah. for, at Christmas time that miraculously appear, and I never see in any other Zara's. Yeah. So they know, let's make 200 for the King's Road store. They'll go. Then they have... Um, Tier two, which I would say is like Kensington High Street, is a tier two. One of the Oxford Street shops, the Primark one, in the prime, old Primark building, I think it's a tier two, whereas the Bond Street, I think is a tier one. Oh, right. I yeah. thought Oxford Street was a tier one. Maybe yeah. it's not. But it's the Oxford Street one by Bond Street on that corner right. that I get more stuff in. But there was a very bold... And then Reading the Oracle would be a tier three. Oh, really? That's why really? people go, I never see anything. I mean, you also, I remember you doing a complete rush from Zara in Oxford Street to Boots, the big boots in Oxford Street. Oh, yes. And I was thinking, she's really pushing the boundary. <laughs> because you went straight into to La Roche-Posay and you were literally, pose, you were down low going, and this is where you can get. Yeah. And I just thought, <laughs> she's on borrowed time here. Um, and they shortly showed you out. But did. by then you'd done everything in the bargain basement, basically. <laughs> um, can I just finish by saying, so good joke. you are... You are so aspirational. Honestly, Trini, I, I'm sitting here flattering you, but I, I mean it. I follow you because I just think there are boundaries to, to still break through. Yeah. And you've done it in a technology that was, you know, these young people filming us at the moment, it's their friend. For me, it's still the enemy technology. I'm still trying to come to terms with it. You embraced it. You ran with it. Yeah. Where's left for you to beat your way through? You've done the antipodes. Yeah. Where's left? America. 
Oh my I'm God. in America, and I think when you're looking at the Chandra America, Lily, we have to let Please, her in. Please, can we just um, have a look let, at Lily? Dido, let her in. This Let's is, bring her on oh, the lap. This, yeah. is, this is, look. I'd say America. Lily, come and say hi, Lily's going, you can't her up. leave me and go to I America. Let's, because otherwise Pam will say, what is that? Oops. Oh Oops. my God, I'm <laughs> dropping that. Sorry, I've just dropped the lovely mic. Hold oh, on. Let's just, hold on, okay, hold on. Just Hopefully it's all right. It's flashing red. Is that okay? It's okay. It's all right. Okay, so that's Lily. And Lila will be upset that we've got Lily on camera. Um, but this is Lily. She's 11. She's a parson terror. She's a bit insane. Oh, a bit insane. Don't Loved you in the love office. how nature has given I her know. these markings? She's absolutely... And her sister probably would have been squished next to her in the womb with, with the other side. I always wonder if when they're being born, the sides that they're squidged up to with their puppy sisters... Is that is determines worse. the colouring. Yeah, I don't know. You, you know, I do a dog show. I don't know why do I'm you? telling this. Oh, tell <laughs> us. No, we, or anyone no. who loves dogs, when do you do your dog well, show? Well, I do the dog show every Thursday, 2.30 to 3.30, and I have a podcast called Dogs in the City, which is up for an award. Oh, my God, um, you have dogs on? a BBC on? podcast, Even yes. Even their dogs. Oh, well, I'd love you, Trini, but you don't have time. This has taken years. But I love years. it. Can I just say, what a fabulous idea for a radio show. Yeah. And also, so can people get to you digitally around England? Yes, absolutely okay. they can. Online, yeah. BBC Radio London, Joe Good Middle Age Minx. But Lily... Middle Age Minx, and that's exactly what we've got here. Can I just say how much we joined Joe's company? You can edit it out later, but can, are there any questions or people ask us stuff about well, Joe? Well, everyone's asking about your dress, Joe. Joe, your oh, dress, where's it from? This is Bella Freud, and the reason I'm wearing it is I was watching Trini talking about adding a little bit of a glow <laughs> to your face, um, which uh, is what I've been doing, actually. It's, uh, but you've got to watch this. We've recorded me doing my makeup uh, with Trini London earlier on, so you're going to have to watch that. She's but doing a how I. I'm doing a how I. Trini London. Um, but, uh, but this be, is beautiful on and you, And because Jane. I wear things like this to work, um, and then I go out after work, um, I think I'm going to the Mary Poppins premiere, I think. I oh, lovely. So I just add a bit of glitter, which I learned from you on your latest. Just add a bit of glow. Yeah. Which I did is what I've been virtue. doing. It is virtue. I have virtue. virtue. It looks lovely. Here, yeah. what do we call this? I was trying to this, remember. This, that little line yes. or that area, the because nasal Lloyd passage. Thank you, I knew she'd know. <laughs> so that is uh, where I've been putting little virtue as well and around here and around here. Any other questions, darling? Any burning, burning desires? Um, it was all pretty much just about Joe's dress, but oh. people love Dublin and saying, please, please, please come to America again. Oh, we well. will. Yeah, so the next thing is America, Joe, but I think I have to get, open your mouth up. I have to treat America. Um, the way I would treat Dublin or Australia. So I'd do San Francisco, you know, and spend a week there, really getting to know San Francisco. I'd do Toronto, Montreal. I'm just telling you now the America dates, ladies, when they'll happen, I don't know. But I'd do Toronto, Montreal, um, Los Angeles, um, San Francisco, and then I might do Chicago, Texas, New York, something like that. But like, you've got to, because America's huge. Yeah, of course it is. And you can just get swallowed up and lost. So you've got to really like, so I need those Trini tribes in those countries, in those towns to build. So when I come, there'll be these women who are like, you know, already passionate. And I think that helps us. I think they already are. Can I, can I just carry your luggage? Oh, come on the trip, Joe. I love right, Can I just say, I love Joe being on and do listen to oh. 1.30 BBC London Radio. She has the best show. This has made my week. Thank you, Trini. Thank you, Lily.